Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Um, inflation, the inflation problem is, oh my God. I don't even know where I should start with this. Let's go. No, let's let's just talk about inflation. Oh, what was the release here? Hold on. I just had it. Dang it. Wall Street it was a Wall Street Journal article. I lost it here. US inflation accelerated in August as gasoline prices jumped. So after what is it? Uh about a year's worth of inflation going down because they raised interest rates and they Remember, the inflation number is a, a thing they pick out of thin air. They don't actually determine it anymore. Uh, inflation is really at 18 to 20 percent. Um, I, I, but people like to use this to say that the administration is doing well with the economy or not, and the Fed pretends that this makes any difference um, in their um decision-making on raising interest rates or not. So inflation has turned up again pretty significantly, um, and this month is even worse, by the way, because we're halfway through the month almost. Anyway, um, here's what they announced today for last month. U.S. inflation accelerated in August due to a jump in gasoline costs. Now, since uh, the end of August and, and now, middle of September, gas prices have jumped even higher. Uh, consumer pr price index, a measure of goods and services across the country, rose 0.6% in August, which is a pretty big jump. Faster pace than in July as gasoline prices jumped, the Labor Department reported Wednesday. Price rose 0.3% when stripping out volatile categories such as food and energy. Who can survive without food and energy? Why would you strip out food and energy? Sorry, you can't eat and you can't uh, have any energy. You got nothing left. Let's just take out the things we, we want to take out. It's so ridiculous. Um, but do you remember the Inflation Reduction Act, how the Democrats sold it as massive spending to reduce inflation? Now we're saying the massive inflation, but they're changing what they're calling it. Now listen to this, the title of this article. Inflation Reduction Act is, ex is uh, accelerating reductions in CO2 emissions, a new report says. So the Re Inflation Reduction Act was not about keeping inflation down. It was about reducing CO2 emissions. It's like global warming and global freezing and you name it. It's bullshit from Washington. Remember, acid rain. Oh, my, there's just every, every time there's an election, there's got to be a new thing to jump up and down about. There's Biden trying to color in between the lines of his signature. The Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act has greatly accelerated the reduction in carbon dioxide emissions from the electricity industry. This is why I'm talking about this. The Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is all about spending more money. Massive amounts of money. And so much of the Green New Deal is focused on solar and renewable energies and electric cars that's the big crux that and the biggest thing in the world is silver there needs so much silver in every single one of those applications like massive amounts of silver and who's paying for it taxpayers and they're creating money out of there it's the government paying for this so it's not going to stop they're going to print more money to get, put more solar panels out there, more electric cars out there. And the, the biggest problem, here's the biggest problem with the Green New Deal, which they should have known, and you have, anybody with half a brain is, would know this. Silver price suppression distorts markets. Silver price suppression distorts markets, meaning you can make your electric car because silver only costs $25 an ounce couple ounces of that no problem that won't add to the, the the cost of the car let's make it a zillion of them what if the price were two thousand five hundred dollars an ounce and there's a couple two three ounces in an electric car 
that jumps the price five to seven five to seven thousand dollars per car what about electric panels all of a sudden electric panels no one would be using them i'm not saying that two thousand five hundred dollars is the the true fair market value of silver i don't know what it is and nobody does i can guarantee you it's not 25 dollars. so that's one thing everybody and their mother because the price of silver is low so low the entire industrial complex is using silver all over the place. And I love it. It is the most it is the best metal for conducting electricity on the planet. The best conductor of electricity. So use it in everything electronic. What's electronic? Everything these days. Use it, use it, use it. But here's the problem. In a, a true free market, because of the supply demand deficit, which is uh, one, two, three, this is our fifth year. If you count the uh, uh, the ETPs, which are uh, the ETFs for physical silver. What's it called? ETP. I don't remember. But it's SLV and PSLV and things like that. Which, you, of course, you have to count that. That's investment silver. So this is the fifth year of a deficit, and it's going to be a lot higher than uh, the Silver Institute, that ridiculous organization, is predicting. They're predicting a deficit of uh, 112 million ounces. <laughs> Where's it coming from if it's not coming from, I mean, the ETPs are just, they're saying there's going to be a 24% decrease in the amount of silverware when last year there was an 80% increase. It's just the whole, nothing works. The math doesn't work. The other problem by screwing up the markets to determine a free market value of silver is the mines aren't mining any silver anymore. They're like, why why in, invest in trying to find all this silver and building out a mine for 10 years if you're only getting $23, $24 an ounce? It, the numbers don't work. So what happens? You can see it right here. For the last 10 years, mine production is exactly, it's less. Since 2014, like eight, 882 million ounces, 2023 projected, 842 million ounces. By the way, 20 of those million ounces are already gone from mine closures. So it's it might even be below 800 million ounces because of various other things. I am shocked that the that uh, third world countries are actually selling silver to these criminals. They should pass a law in every country that there's no more exporting of silver. Mexico should have done it a long time ago. Mexico would be the richest country in the world because a third of our silver comes from Mexico. So those are the two things. Number one, silver is being used more and more and more because it's cheap and it's a great conductor of electricity. So electric cars through the roof, solar panels beyond through the roof. I think we'll do over 200 million ounces just in solar panels this year. And the projection from the Silver Institute is 160 million ounces. I'm looking for 200 million. And we're already halfway through the year, so I kind of cheated because I already know we're on track for that anyway. <laughs> it is insane what they have done to the silver market. A free market would fix everything. Free markets are the road to freedom. The song I wrote. You, when you distort markets, you have things like overuse of silver in the industrial side. Massive overuse. And you have dwindling mine supply because it's not i mean who would start a silver mine if you're going to lose money it takes forever to get one of those going so what is the solution you either use a hell of a lot less silver going forward so that means less solar panels less electric cars or you jack that price up to get the mines open again and that would take five to ten years if the price of silver doubles and triples Five to ten years to get those mines up and running. So there's a huge lag time between when you want, oh yeah, everybody's going crazy about silver. And because it's so volatile, everybody's skittish and shy. You know, when JP Morgan rigged the price of silver from twenty-five to fifty dollars in two thousand eleven, all these miners started, okay, yeah, we're gonna build more, and then they slammed the price da back down and they lost their shirts. They started investing in these mines, it's wasted money because the price didn't stay up there. That's the problem with rigging markets. You have market distortions. Hope that makes sense. 
So anyway, the Inflation Reduction Act is reducing uh, CO2 emissions. It's no longer reducing inflation. What they meant the whole time was CO2 emissions. They didn't really mean the, the inflation, monetary inflation. No, no, no. It's CO2 deflation. And the whole thing's a joke. And speaking of a joke, in September 2001, after, well, first of all, the Green New Deal. What was the Green New Deal? Here it is. What is the Green New Deal? This is from uh, the, for the 2020 election from NBC News. Uh, and this is what each candidate says about the Green New Deal. Here's the highlights of the plan. The Green New Deal is not a specific policy proposal, but rather a general set of goals. It seeks to get the world to net zero emissions by 2050, and ideally even sooner in the United States. Net zero emissions by 2050. First of all, as we've seen from past reports, the uh, projections for the solar panel installations around the world comes out to 2050. We will be using over 100% of the mined silver for solar panels. And probably at $24 an ounce. <laughs> it just doesn't work. The math doesn't work. That's why there's not a specific policy proposal. We don't have the mat, the the silver for any of that, and other other rare earth elements. It goes beyond environmental and climate change to call for universal health care and affordable housing. Holy shit! How much money are we talking here? Does anybody ever on the left ever sit and say, "How much money will be will we be making, pumping into this? What's the return on our investment?" To give everybody universal health care, everybody affordable housing, everybody a solar panel. Let's just and, and a lot of it talks about the underprivileged. We should give them free solar energy. I mean, where's this money coming from? It all comes from the printing press, the electronic blinking printing press. What's the difference between $100 billion and a $1 trillion? It's one little zero at the end. So not everybody, not all Democratic presidential candidates. Back to Green New Deal. Elizabeth Warren, of course, way left. Bernie Sanders, of course. Tulsi Gabbard, no. We're we going to figure out what this costs us. Buttigieg, way left. Joe Biden, the president now, way left and, and completely his mind is gone. So the, the lefties are telling everybody what to do and Joe doesn't really do anything anymore. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, way left. Michael Bennett favors another approach. I love Trump. Strongly opposes Green New Deal. And listen to this. We will defend the environment, but we will also defend American sovereignty, American prosperity, and we will defend American jobs. That's the right answer. That's abs again to our president. I think he's our current president. Um, but who knows? Who knows? And does it really matter? Is it affecting your daily life? So... Right when Biden got in, they published this massive solar future study um, from the U.S. Department of Energy, and it, it spells out how by 2050 we can be completely off-grid, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, who the hell approved this, and who did this study? And there she is. Does she look like she's from Berkeley? <laughs> yeah. Becca Jones Albertus is the U.S. Department Secretary in charge of uh, energy, solar energy technologies. Um, so I did a little checking on her. Becca. I knew a girl named Becca once. Could be her. Now, I'm not anti-Cal Berkeley. Great university. It's gone crazy leftist lately, but my both my parents went to Cal Berkeley. My dad's a lawyer. My dad was a lawyer. My mom was, uh, she worked in the in the library. She worked there and she got her degree from Berkeley. Great school was <laughs> and then money got in the way all these universities getting all these free money from the government was insane and of course the leftist agenda got in the way and now it's just piece of shit university sorry eloise my niece goes there right now um but i i grew up going to the cal football games and being on campus because my mom worked there and it, it was great it was yes it was a left leaning institution but you need both sides now it's just a crazy woke joke a woke joke <laughs> and when the money stops coming from the federal government that's when the game's over for 
places like Cal Berkeley. Anyway, Becca Jones came from there, and yeah, she she's basically a, a lefty. And and this report that she wrote, or at least uh, published, I think she wrote most of it. Um, talks very little about silver. A little bit, but all these projections, none of them happen without finding massive amounts of silver in some way. And with prices at $24, $23, you're not going to find any silver because you won't even be looking for it. It takes 10 years to develop, fully develop a big silver mine. So Becca, you should have called Rodruda. <laughs> um, and then this, this is, this is the key though. Congress eyes another $235 billion in clean energy subsidies. That's how they're going to pay for it. They're going to, so it's going to happen. We, they will create all these solar panels, but where are they going to get the silver? At some point, you either don't get the silver or you pay fair market value for it. And fair market value today, I would think two to $3,000 an ounce. What makes you crazy? Am I? We'll find out very soon. In a freely traded market, we have the world hasn't even known a freely traded market since the 1850s for silver. That's how important it's been. Anyway, great uh, discussion on Capitol Hill. Uh, the de devastating human costs of the Biden Mayorkas border crisis. About it's about child trafficking. Most of the people I've seen, I haven't watched the whole thing. Um, Tim Ballard's there, the guy from. Um, the movie about child trafficking. If you haven't seen it yet, The Price of Freedom, holy shit. Is it The Cost of Freedom or The Price of Freedom? Um, but he is testifying. Here, I'll give you a little snippet. Check this out. I thank all the witnesses, and I now recognize Mr. Ballard for five minutes to summarize his opening statement. Chairman Green, Ranking Member Thompson, and members of the Homeland Security Committee, it's an honor to testify here today. I'd like to begin by showing you a powerful clip from the popular film, Sound of Freedom. Oh yeah, that, uh, that's an old picture. You know how kids are these days, they, they just grow up so fast. That's him. No, 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 I, I'm his uncle. Get off the no, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm his uncle, you just ask him. Just ask him, I, I'm his uncle. This scene depicts a moment from my real life I'll never forget. I was working for the Department of Homeland Security out of Calexico, California, and I can tell you firsthand that the only reason we were able to save this precious little boy was due to the fact that they had to take him across the border at a port of entry checkpoint because the border walls compelled them to do so. The horrors a child faces as a victim of human trafficking demand that we take action. A child can be sold up to 20 times a day, six days a week, for 10 years or even longer, depending when the abuse began. Just in 2022 alone, immigration authorities encountered more than 152,000 unaccompanied minors at or near the U.S.-Mexico border, representing an all-time high. I believe every member of this committee and every good and people everywhere can agree that human trafficking is a plague and an evil that must be eradicated. Evidence of this can be seen in the response to the movie Sound of Freedom based on my life story, which has been a surprise box office success and is sparking a national conversation on child sex slavery and trafficking, the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. The conclusions I offer in this testimony are based on my professional experience as an anti-trafficking operator. After starting my professional career with the CIA, I transferred to the Department of Homeland Security. At DHS, I spent 12 years as a special agent and undercover operator for Homeland Security Investigations. After leaving the federal government, I have continued the fight against human trafficking, first as the founder and CEO 
of the organization Operation Underground Railroad, and now as a senior advisor to the Spear Fund, which is an organization that funds and collaborates with experts, organizations, and concerned citizens around the globe to fight and end human trafficking. Traffickers use our southern border to bring slaves into our country for the sex industry because the United States is one of the highest consumers in child sex abuse material in the world. Our federal agents who work at the southern border are women and men of the highest integrity and dedication. Yet despite the hard work and success the agents on the ground, one thing has become vividly clear. Poor U.S. border security and broken U.S. policy are feeding the growth of human trafficking in the United States. One way this is seen is the absence of physical barriers on our border. I have personally seen how ports of entry were responsible for helping rescue a child, catch a sexual predator, and start a chain of events that rescued multiple children from his abuse. On the other hand, I've spoken with survivors who were trafficked by cartels, taking advantage of the miles of unprotected U.S. border. In one case in particular, a young woman was brought across the border at an area where no barriers or protections existed. Once in the U.S., she was sold and raped for money up to 30 to 40 times a day for five years before eventually escaping herself. She shared with me the tragic conclusion that had her captors been forced to attempt a crossing into our country at the port of entry, just like the little boy you saw in the film, that she would have had a better chance of being rescued. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Go see the movie. Do what you can. Spread the word about the movie, about the situation. And no matter what you think about the movie, it's ten times worse, including the people in Washington. Yes, your elected officials. Um, this has to end. And the only way it can end is if we face it head on. And that's what, you know, it's a tough conversation to have with anybody. Um, that, that this is allowed in the United States of America and by our politicians and our bankers. But it is. Um, and we need to stop that. All right? Go check out the whole hearing. I haven't, you know, anybody on the Democrat or Republican side, side who, who disagree with this, with, with this hearing, I haven't heard anybody yet, but should be, you know, fully investigated if you ask me. That's what I got for you. Uh, we are still giving away the very tokens, at least of right now. It's the 13th. Uh, these will end quickly. <laughs> As when the crypto run starts, very runs very fast. Very runs very fast. Um, just because it's so thinly traded. Uh, if you, you know what you're doing in cryptos, you can go down to Mercatox and try to get yourself some. Um, it's a very sketchy exchange. <laughs> I've lost many a crypto on that exchange over the years. So um, just be careful. Uh, but yeah, get your very token. It's like a lottery ticket. Stick it in your vault with your silver. And uh, one day, someday, I think it'll be worth a lot. Who knows? We will find out soon enough. But go to roadruder.com, click on subscribe today. And uh, with one year subscription to the private road, we will send you the very token. All right? Uh, that's it. I'll talk to you later.